Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to review This Is What It Sounds Like, with the music you love says about you by Susan Rogers and Augie August. This book was published in 2022 by W.W. Norton, and the hardcover copy that I received as a gift from a friend comes in at 288 pages. This book is a blend of music, memoir, and psychology. The primary author of this book, Susan Rogers, is a record producer turned PhD in psychology. She studied music cognition and psychoacoustics, and she now teaches at the Berklee College of Music in Boston. But while she was still working in the industry, she produced records for a lot of notable bands and artists, such as the Bare Naked Ladies, and probably most notably, Prince. She was a staff engineer for Prince for a chunk of the 1980s, and she actually worked with him on his very famous album, Purple Rain. Suffice it to say that Susan Rogers loves music. She has an ear for it, but even more than those two things, she obviously has an interest in the way our brains perceive music. And I think that's an interest she shares with the co-author of this book, Augie August, who is a neuroscientist and an author. He's written a number of different books on psychology. He was also once a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Fun fact. Susan Rogers and Augie August teamed up to write this book in which they explore why specific types of music, specific songs, or as Susan Rogers would say, specific records or a specific recording of a song resonate with us, speak to us in the way that they do, have the ability to stop us in our tracks and speak directly to the core of who we are. I think we all know that sensation when we feel it. But in this book, the two authors attempt to break down different qualities of music in order to help us as readers be able to pinpoint and put into words what qualities within music, what specific ingredients within a song all add up to create music magic in our ears. In order to do this, they introduce a concept that they refer to as a listener profile. Each and every one of us has our own own specific listener profile, completely unique to us. And it's basically just a combination of different elements within a song, within music, that all come together to hit our melodic sweet spot. All the different things we love about music that helps our brain just wash itself in the happy chemicals. And all of our music preferences are very unique to us. They develop through a combination of biology, experience, and happenstance. Sometimes there's a reason why it's really easy for us to connect to a specific piece of music. Other times, we just like what we like. Our listener profiles are more or less defined by where we sit on seven different musical spectrums. Authenticity, realism, novelty, melody, lyrics, rhythm, and timbre. Each one of these elements gets its own chapter within this book. And as Susan Rogers is discussing each of them, she's also bringing in her experiences from her time as a record producer, but also more recently from her time as a professor. She talks about the science of how our brains perceive these different aspects of music. And she also references a number of different songs to illustrate her points as she goes along. As you make your way through this book, you'll find yourself considering your own music taste, really thinking about it in a way you may never have before. You'll be asking yourself questions like, do I prefer my music to be deeply emotional or do I prefer it to be intellectual in its meaning or its structure? Do I like my music to be within a genre I already know and love or do I like my music to push boundaries? Do songs that I love need to have strong lyrics or a solid beat, maybe even both, by the end of each chapter, you will not only fully understand that specific musical element that Susan Rogers is dissecting, but you'll also start to get a sense of the formula that's behind the songs that make up your own musical identity. Because of all that, I do feel like the subtitle of this book, What the Music You Love Says About You, I feel like it's rather misleading. I feel like it would have been better as something like why you love the music you do or why the music you love speaks to you, because this book isn't about outward facing messages regarding our own music taste. This book isn't teaching us to identify what qualities of music speak to us the most so that we can broadcast something to the world about ourselves or slap an additional label onto ourselves, send up red flags for anyone who wants to date us. It's nothing like that. 
It's about understanding what it is within our own brains that responds to these specific elements of music so that we can have a deeper appreciation for the songs that we already know and love. This book is like a couple's retreat with your playlist full of favorites. You've always appreciated those tunes, but you'll grow to love them on a whole new level after this reading experience. This book is fantastic, plain and simple. Susan Rogers is overflowing with love for music, and it saturates this entire book in such a glorious way. Even before she was in the industry, she was an avid listener of music, and she really emphasizes throughout this book the power of just listening to music. It helps you learn more about music. It helps you learn more about your own musical taste, and it closes that creative loop. These songs were created in order to be listened to, to be enjoyed, and to inspire future generations. Susan Rogers also makes it very clear, as she's discussing all of the different musical elements, that no one music preference is better than another. You are not superior if you prefer your music to be brilliantly structured or have highly intellectual lyrics, and you're not worse if you prefer simple songs within one genre. Our proclivities are unique to us, they are highly personalized, and they are all equal. In general, she just very much discourages music snobbery because she knows how unique music tastes are to each and every person. She has this really welcoming, very curious tone. You may have noticed that I'm referring to one author of this book a whole lot more than the other as I've been doing this review, but that's because the voice within this book is Susan's. She's the one narrating. She's the one speaking to us as readers. But that doesn't mean that you don't notice the presence of her co-author. She mentions him regularly. She talks about how the two of them have very different music tastes, for instance. But you can also feel his presence in a behind the scenes kind of way, kind of like a producer, you could say. Not that Susan couldn't have written this book on her own. Obviously, she has the experience in the music industry and she has the scientific knowledge to be able to write this book, but you can really feel the depth of his scientific knowledge and his experience writing books enriching this book. They clearly made a very good team. This is an extremely rewarding book to read partially because it is a highly participatory reading experience. There are over 100 songs referenced throughout this book. Now, some of those are just mentioned in passing, so you don't have to listen to those. But there are a lot of songs that, yeah, you kind of need to listen to them to understand what point Susan Rogers is trying to make about that song. Also, I would just recommend you listen to those as you go along, because she points out small things about those records that I definitely would not have picked up on by myself. So effectively, you have a music expert whispering insights into your ear as you listen, and it's awesome. But because you'll be pausing your reading every so often to stop and go listen to that song, then come back and pick up where you left off, this book is going to take you a little bit longer to read than would any other book. That's not something I personally minded because it forced me to really savor this book in a way that I sometimes forget to with other books. But also because of that stop start nature to this book. This is not a title I would recommend as an audiobook. Listen, I'm a big fan of audiobooks. I think a lot of titles work great on audio. I think even some books work better as audiobooks than they do physical books. And you would think that a book about music would make the perfect audiobook. But because this book references so many songs and they could not possibly license all of those songs to include in this audiobook, it's an issue. I downloaded a sample of this audiobook just to confirm my suspicion that the music would not be in there, and I can confirm the music is not a part of this audiobook. But I heard as I was listening to the sample, Susan Rogers narrates it herself. And from that little snippet I heard, she does a fantastic job. I love her voice. It's not like this is a bad audiobook. But just the idea of listening to the narration, then hearing Susan Rogers mention a song, then having to pause the audiobook, 
audiobook on whatever device I'm listening to it on, to switch to a different app or even switch to a different device, to play that song, listen to as much of it as I want, pause it, then go back to the audiobook just to start that whole process all over again in the next paragraph. It seems like a logistical nightmare. I think if you can swing it, a physical copy of this book or even an ebook are definitely the better ways to experience it. All the music that's mentioned in this book is listed and also linked to various different apps and websites on the website that they created for this book. This is what it sounds like.com. But for some reason, they only created a playlist of all the songs on the title app, as in T I D A L. I don't use Tidal. I don't know anyone who does. Like millions of other people, I use Spotify, and I really wanted there to be a Spotify playlist so I could just move through all of the songs in this book, as opposed to needing to click around after every individual mention of a song, which happens so much in this book. So because W.W. Norton couldn't spare an intern for an hour, I guess, I had to spend the time making the playlist on Spotify. So if you are also a Spotify user, that will be linked for you in the description box below. Crowdsourcing is done at your own risk. Someone might do your work for you, but they also might be a mouthy YouTuber who will complain about it on the internet. But that is my only complaint. And as you can tell, it has nothing to do with the actual content of this book. This was a five-star read for me. I was so excited as I was reading this book, and this is the most engaged I've been with a nonfiction book in a long time. And I read a lot of good nonfiction, so this one is just that good. Because of that, I plan on recommending this one far and wide. I feel like most people out there enjoy music. So I feel like pretty much anyone could pick up this book and have an interest in the subject matter. But because the authors are giving you this sort of unofficial questionnaire as you move through the book, making you think really deeply about your own music preferences, this one is not just baseline fascinating, it also has the capability of being personal personal to each and every person who picks it up. I learned so much about my own musical identity by reading this book, and I've loved music my entire life. I thought I knew what I liked. I've always known that I like a strong beat in music, but after reading this book, I also figured out that I really value repetition in songs, I guess to kind of simulate a beat in a way. I also learned that I like my music abstract, I like it to be genre blending, and ironically enough, even even though I'm a book nerd, I'm a lover of language, lyrics in songs barely matter to me. If you're curious to hear any of my favorite songs, I will link my playlist full of favorites in the description box below, along with the link to this book's website, the link to that playlist I created, and also links to where you can get your hands on your own copy of this book in case you want to read it. But let me know in the comment section below, not only do you want to read this book, because I want to know that too, but let me know what your favorite song is and why you think it speaks to you. I am fascinated to see if any of us share taste in music. Also, in that description box, you'll see something I like to call the further reading section, where I will list some book titles I think you might be interested in if this music topic is fascinating to you. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active, in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.